Hi there, and welcome to a follow-up uh, presentation to our uh, Initrator webinar last week. Uh, we're looking here at the trigger lines uh, along with the uh, swing trend indicator that we uh, presented. We have here a uh, D-Renko chart with a trend definition of three ticks. And um, we'll show you here how you can set that up. So the D Renko is for a double. So that is a one to two ratio. So if we have a tick trend of three, the reversal bar will be required to reach six ticks. So if you set this to a T Renko, you would have a triple, a one to three, meaning a three to nine and quadruple a three to 12. And then with the lizard Renko, of course, you can set this dynamically. You can set a four to six or a uh, three to eight, uh, whichever what you want. It's dynamic. And then down here, you can choose your, your chart style. So Unibrick is also here. And um, then if you want to have uh, wicks or just bricks or the bar open included, uh, you can uh, choose that as well. And then we'll go ahead and add the indicators here. So the library indicators are located in the lizard indicators folder, trigger lines down here. We'll uh, deactivate the paint bars as we'll use the paint bars available from professional indicators located in the lizard trader folder. So we'll go down and grab the swing trend here. And uh, then uh, we'll align this with uh, what I showed you in the webinar. So I had the uh, swing trend based on ticks and uh, the deviation was a tick setting. So 18 ticks equals three times the reversal bar. I'll just have a swing strength of uh, one here and uh, I will deactivate a bunch of these plots I'm really just interested in the paint bars of the trend and the signals. And we'll apply that, the signals to the major trend and we'll show the paint bars based on the major trend. And we will of course also add Bloodhound to this, showing you how to set this up. And we'll hit OK. All right, so what we're looking at here, as I mentioned, is this bias. So we want to take this long trend change here because we have a confirmation from the trigger lines. And then we have another long trade here. And so I think the first uh, stop here is just to set up the trigger lines. And uh, we can go in here and just choose the indicator comparison here. And uh, we'll make the comparison with a fixed value. So we'll call this uh, trigger lines trend. Grab the trigger lines. like we did before in the chart. And we'll choose here the trend data series and make the comparison with a fixed value, as I mentioned, fixed value is zero and we'll have an uptrend when uh, the values are above zero. So positive one and short output is uh, negative one. So we will want it to be with uh, below zero. And uh, then we can start building here on our logic, create a new one, call this, uh, it's going to be the entry. And grab our solver node here that we just created. Like so to define the trend bias. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, 
isolate these uh, signals here coming up next. And uh, we'll go into solvers and add a new indicator comparison. So we'll have the swing trend signal. Again, we'll have to define the indicator as we have it showing up on the chart. So you will recall that I changed uh, from ATR deviation type to ticks and I set the uh, multiplier to 18 ticks, namely three times the reversal bar for the chart that I'm using here. Uh, it's just an example, but uh, showing you a different uh, way to use the swing trend indicator in terms of multiplier. And uh, then finally here, we will set the uh, swing strength to one. And then grab the data series here, a major bullish signal for long and bearish for short. Uh, now the way that this is uh, set up uh, is uh, positive for both uh, long and short signals. So when we're doing the fixed value comparison here, we are looking for a positive for both long and short. And uh, let's just go ahead and test that we had this uh, set up correctly here. We have the trend signal for long, and we also have it for short here. So it looks like it's doing what it's supposed to do. And next we're looking for this key continuation signal. So what we can do then is to go in here and copy the swing trend signal. So trend signal is the first signal and then the swing trend key signal. That is the first signal coming after the trend change. So everything here is the same, but uh, obviously we'll have to switch out the data series that we're looking for. So we have the bullish uh, key signal here. Hit OK. And just do a quick check that we have the expected output. It's looking good. The double arrow is the key signal and we're isolating those and not the single ones. Okay, so I think that's uh, pretty much it for the entry signal here. Uh, we'll combine these three conditions via a OR node first to say that we're looking for both um, swing trend key and swing trend signals. So it can be either of those, but we want the trigger lines trend to be aligned for both. So that will be a AND node and line that up. And we see signals here. Okay, so that is the entry condition. I mentioned also a exit condition here the basic test here was uh, just done by a profit target of uh, 100 uh, ticks and then a stop loss of 50 ticks, but then you start seeing a lot of really stupid trades. So when you're dipping below here, then you should just get out. And what we want to do is to say that uh, when in a long scenario, the high of the bar is below the trigger average, then you're going to get out and vice versa for shorts. So if you have the low um, above uh, the trigger average, uh, then you're exiting a short position. So let's have a look at uh, how we can uh, set that up uh, coming up here. So we'll create a uh, new logic 
call that uh, exit. And um, let's uh, just start with this uh, comparison of uh, price and uh, the trigger average. So we'll uh, go in here and create a new indicator comparison. We'll use price here as input uh, A. And uh, for long, uh, just uh, keep in mind that the long signal is uh, exiting a short position and the short here is exiting a long position. So therefore this will be a low comparison and this will be a high comparison versus the trigger lines average. Like so. So let's uh, call this uh, bar high low versus trigger average. And then I briefly also mentioned uh, I want to look at this contradiction that once this is starting to slope down and we have the price uh, condition that we just specified, uh, then this uh, exit signal will uh, will trigger. So we're going to use a um, indicator slow solver to do that. A very uh, handy study or tool, the slope uh, solver, if you're working with moving averages. So indicator slope here, and we'll add that. And we'll call this uh, the trigger slope, and it will be output in direction. So we're getting here the trigger lines again. So this output here, let's make a little note here. Uh, trigger slope in direction. And then uh, we can copy this and we can say trigger average against direction. So we'll switch uh, out the data series here. We're looking at the long now, the long moving average. So hit OK. And then we'll have the output against direction. And let's see if we can uh, pull this together in the exit logic here. And this is uh, what we're looking for. So uh, we're in a long trend uh, from here, taking these signals. But when uh, we're dipping below the trigger average here, and this uh, is sloping down, contradicting the uh, average here, then uh, uh, we want to get out of uh, our position. So we trigger a exit here in the event that the uh, 100 uh, profit target or the minus 50 stop loss has uh, not been hit. Okay, so uh, now we have uh, that uh, basic uh, setup. But uh, another thing that I like to add to almost all my strategy strategies is a time filter. So uh, let's just put in a time session solver here, which is basically the window uh, when you will have the strategy active. I will just use here a, uh, a default template. So I'm using CME FX futures here, seeing that I'm on the 60 euro futures contract. So uh, you can move these uh, the scheduling around and save it uh, as your own. But I think this is just a quick uh, way to say that I want to trade this uh, during the regular trading hours. Um, that might change uh, based on your, your setup. Uh, but for hit uh, OK for now, 
and then we'll hook this up and uh, you will see that uh, this these signals took place during the morning session uh, here on my end and so they are now filtered out because of this uh, time session solver all right so uh, now we'll uh, we'll save this and uh, go ahead into blackbird to see how we can uh, enter it into our trade management logic uh, we'll add blackbird here and activate and then from here we're going to create a, a new trade management rule this is going to be very basic of course uh, seeing that we're just using this bloodhound signal and we have our template file uh, swing trend uh, trigger lines hit OK and we're going to use entry for our entry signals and we're going to use the exit template for the exits and then otherwise uh, we will have a market entry as uh, the order type and stop loss and profit targets will be based on tick values 100 and minus 50 respectively and that's uh, all there is uh, to to this really uh, we're just doing a quick uh, test of this and the purpose uh, of course was to do a little comparison here between the Renko bars uh, that I showed uh, during the presentation. And so uh, let's see what we have here. If you have any signals, I need to activate the plots again here. And so we see a couple of trades coming in here. We can uh, show the exit logic here. We have the entry logic up here and then uh, this one taken out a little prematurely, unfortunately, but uh, that is the way the exit signal is set up uh, as of now. And I think it uh, kind of makes sense the way it's uh, set up as well. Um, on this one, we're not getting a signal because it's contradicted uh, by the exit signal. And I didn't have a lot of uh, data on this chart, so maybe we can just uh, go ahead and add some data here. So put it on 30 days. So it'd probably be a little bit different seeing that I have a different um, time window here, but let's go ahead and see what we get for our strategy performance here. So the out of sample walk forward test was uh, not as promising as the what we saw in the webinar. And uh, as I said, I think this is also a concept that is uh, too simple. Uh, just using the signals here and the trigger lines, you probably need also to incorporate some uh, support resistance uh, consideration, market value as well. Look at the VWAP. Uh, but for now, you have a uh, quick uh, tutorial on how to use some of the um, data series that are available to you in the Swing Trend. And um, with that, I'm going to uh, conclude uh, my tutorial on uh, the Swing Trend and the trigger lines. And uh, if you have any uh, questions, uh, do feel free to reach out uh, to me via the contact form over at Lizard Indicators or directly a email at uh, info at lizardindicators.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, take care and bye-bye.